The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross and I play Blackjack, a jackalope folk warlock of Sneaky Coyote. I'm Johnny Payne and I play Twitch Grimfoot, a rat folk necromancer. I'm Brooke Bullock and I play Zianci, a spiderkin rogue. I'm Connor Chenault. I play Jessica, a Yodi Ranger. Hi, I'm Ash King. I will be playing Sintra Redmaw, Noel Paladin of the Bone Mother. I'm Kiri Hester. I will be playing Billy Possum, the Possum Fighter. And Aiden Cross as your Dungeon Master. Join us for Tales from the Ironwoods. But I don't, I don't have a tale. A dwarven clan known as the Silverstone Clan, a clan not treated with much respect in the eastern cities of Rotoya, have decided to establish a caravan that wishes to establish a much simpler life away from the big business of Rotoya. Led by a young ambitious dwarf named Alvia Silverstone, they plan to meet with the native Knoll clan, Ironweaver, to establish a deal to allow themselves to settle on the clan's land. We open at night with very few people awake. The only f- defining feature of this area is one lone Joshua tree, and sitting a little bit away from it, five figures huddle around a campfire. One of them, a strong-looking dwarf with long brown hair and a very nice long curled beard, says to the other figures, I do not believe we have been properly introduced. My name is Alvia Silverstone, and by the princess, I would like to thank you all for helping out around here. Now please, if I may ask for your names as he gestures to the figures that stand before him. Well, hi, it's nice to meet you. I'm Jaska. Haven't quite been around these parts before, but certainly interesting to be traveling up to the Ironwoods. And you see a tall, lanky figure in a yodi form. So a coyote mixed with humanoid features. She is wearing a orange bandana, simple leather armor. And on the armor, she has a beaded star upon her chest. And behind her, two large tumbleweeds drift in the wind behind her as a smaller one follows after them. Well, I might as well go next. My name's Blackjack. You see before you a five-foot-tall jackalope folk. Looks like a humanoid bunny, but with horns. He has tawny fur, bright green eyes, and a very skinny bill. He appears dressed as any resident of Venturis with a long coat, vest, scarf, and button-up shirt. But his outfit is a barrage of various colors with no apparent patterns. His coat itself is a veritable plethora of different hues. And he wears a fluorescent pink shirt, blue scarf, and yellow vest. He carries a purple staff from a tree unfamiliar to any of you in Rotoya. His only weapons appear to be a couple of daggers at his hip and a crossbow strapped to his backpack, which is also a patchwork of various colors. I'm not actually from these parts. Uh, I just am a traveler with my friend Zianci. And slipping out from behind Blackjack is a really spindly humanoid figure that has a slight sheen of fur over it, but in contrast to Blackjack, very muted colors of brown leather armor and a brown scarf around his neck. 
but the skin tone, the these little fur bristles on the creature are very vibrant. They're a mix of browns and grays with these pops of brilliant blues and verdant greens and has two gigantic black eyes and then kind of on the side of the temple are two more eyes. This is Zianci, the spiderkin. Yeah, I'm Zianci and uh, I travel with Blackjack and it's really good to be here. Awkward pause. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can tell like, Zianci is very nervous about the situation. And Elvia gestures to the final figure that stands before. I'm Twitch, Twitch Grimfoot, and I'm not as excited to be here as some others looks towards Zianci. In fact, I'm just here for the ride. There's something I need, and I just need a way of getting there. You won't be seeing me long. Probably not much longer than the end of the trail here. So where is it, Joel, going? Deep into the Ironwoods. Uh, I think that's where we're all going, so maybe we all go together. Yes, you're all going with me deep into the Ironwoods. Yeah, maybe we could help you with what you're looking for, or what you're needing. Well, it's a short list, but you've already helped me some. Oh, good. I'm so glad. On the ground between his feet and the dirt of the earth is a faint glow. It looks like a list that might say Jaska, Blackjack, and Zianci. Zianci is right at Blackjack's ear, and Zianci whispers, There's that rumor of the portal in the Ironwoods. We should go there, too. I know. That's where we want to head. Okay. Because I know that that's our way back. Okay. Alvia says, So, um, clearly the rat... Kin person here wants to go deeper into the Ironwoods. Of course, my caravan is just establishing outside of it. It's a bit dangerous further in. What brings the rest of you here? There's no secret. We're not, again, from Venturis. We're travelers from other places, and we find, we hope to find our way back to our home in the Ironwoods. So you're from the Ironwoods? No, we're not from here. We're from another place. Out of the world. I like to make a roll to find out what you're talking about. Maybe a uh, history check. First roll of the game. First yeah. roll of the game. Don't get a one. It's a 12. <laughs> <laughs> In total? Total. <laughs> I'll say that's enough. You know of the existence of other planes, uh, such as the Feywild and the Shadowfell. You don't know where they could be from, but you do know of the existence of other planes, considering you were also a wizard. Am I, am I putting it together? There's a door in the Ironwoods? You guys whispered that, right? We whispered right, it, yeah. So, okay. No. I don't speak on any of this, but you have my attention now. So, our plan for Zianci and I is to go further into the Ironwoods. It was very nice for you to bring us along on your caravan, but uh, we won't be staying for much longer. Certainly, if there's anything else we can help you out with, we are certainly here to do that. But for the most part, we are looking for our own way back home. All people, you know, even if they're humans, dwarves, elves, gnolls, rat people, are allowed in this caravan. What about... Looks down at the ground, sees the name. Jaska. I'm so glad you wrote our names down. I'm so bad with that. Can I write that down too? I mean, I guess I could, but... Like rake a foot, a rotten black foot that looks like it might be decrepit, not even alive anymore, across the ground, and the swirling glow of your names just poof in the wind. Why are you going into the Ironwoods? A couple of reasons. I uh, just left my pack recently, and I'm trying to find... A mentor of sorts. I met him when I was younger, but the only thing that I know of is he continued on west, so Ironwood seems like the best place to find him before I start making my own pack. Of- Jessica, give me a perception check. Okay. 18. Looking around, you're keeping an eye out considering you're a hunter gatherer, and so you're looking around, and on the Joshua tree, you can swear you make out what appears to be an engraving in it. I'll uh, go over and take a look at it, seeing as. The conversation has died down a little. You take a look at it, and on the tree, not really hidden, but kind of hard to see in the nighttime, is the initials G-B. Huh, I wonder what that could be about. Well, we should have a party of some sorts. Get to know each other a little bit better. Oh, like a webbing? Sure. A webbing? Alvia says. Yeah, you know, like whenever... Everybody shares their web, and then we can skitter across it and have fun with, uh, you know, I don't know, what's that, what's that other game people play blackjack here? Over here? Yeah, you know, like, uh, tag, that's the one. 
certainly we could play some tag. I would avoid the webbing. It could get rather sticky, actually. So. That's not sticky at all. You just gotta know where to touch. Like, don't don't get the gooey parts. Not for you, and not for your kind. But I've been to a couple of webbings, and they get stuck in my fur, and it is rather unpleasant. Yeah, that's that's true. I get it. Yeah, let's stay away from webbing anyone. Um, <laughs> but we can throw a party. But as for you, Jaska. Who is this person that you're looking for? Maybe we can help you find them. It's been so long, I don't even really know what he looks like much anymore, let alone however many years it's been. It's been at least five, but I don't think you guys would know him, especially being from wherever you are. And yes, we weren't there for very long. We were only in Venturas for, what was it? Just about a year. It seems a lot longer, but yeah, I think so. It's about Time's a year. weird here in the material plane. It is. So we don't know many people outside of Venturus, but if we hear about this person, maybe we can make sure to point him in your direction if we do run across him. Well, thank you. Let's go to the Ironwoods and see if I can find him before. And of course, helping out our Ratfolk friend uh, as best we can, I think that's a rather good idea. Just like I said, you're coming with me deep into the Ironwoods. Well, I'd like to introduce y'all to someone, or a couple of someones, and she does a little whistle with her fingers in between her teeth, and the tumbleweeds that have been kind of far off in the distance suddenly start rolling over this way. The two larger ones, again, followed by the smaller one. Uh, The smaller one seems almost a little reluctant to be heading over. These are my Pits is such a bad word for him, but might as well call him Pits. This one, and she points to the one on the right, is Blueberry. And the other bigger one is Raspberry. And the smaller one there is Mistletoe. You you might want to watch out for him. He's a little feisty. Those are tumbleweeds? Yes. Do they talk? Uh, no. That's, that's kind of why I call them pets. I'm kind of fond of them. They're quite cute to me. And you see on like Alvia's face, he's like, he's just really confused, just kind of taken aback by the fact that these tumbleweeds are your pets. He's just a little confused. As much as he's confused of all these sorts of people being with him. Well, it's not unusual to see plants that are alive. We have a lot of those in the Feywild, and they usually follow us around, and they bug us a lot. I think it's, it's rather annoying every now and then when you've got some kind of weird plant just wanting to know what you're about. Of course, ours talk, and they just talk and talk, and it's incessant, and sometimes we have to kick them away. But your tumbleweeds certainly seem very pleasant. Are you part plant? I am not a plant. Never mind. Do I look like a plant? (laughs) No, you don't look like a plant. You almost fit the description. Nice jacket. I'd like to make an introduction, and I've been fidgeting with something in my hands, and I hold up a piece of string with just an obscure piece of wood on it. And I bounce it one time and it just fizzles away. And then one of your tumbleweeds is like moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Out of character, I just cast Unseen Servant and he's over okay. there going poop, poop, okay. poop, 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 poop. <laughs> My friends are playing with your friends and soon we'll all be friends. I do need to know for specifics mm-hmm. which tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> they have is there, is there one that looks weaker or well, smaller? You would so, probably assume that mistletoe is the weaker one since one. he is a lot smaller. Yeah. Okay, so as your unseen servant, mm-hmm. so we don't really know what's happening, starts shaking mistletoe. Mistletoe will rattle violently and try and lash out at your unseen servant. And this one can destroy him. Yeah. <laughs> this one seems a little bit more feisty than the other two. Okay. What's gotten into that one? Never Did you curse it? Never pick on the smaller one. And Jessica will, oh, mistletoe, honey, are you okay? And she'll come over and pet its twigs. You hear Alvia whisper under his breath and you for give me perception checks. Okay. 12. 14. 21. 5. <laughs> well, you don't hear it, but Blackjack, Zianci, and Jaska all hear, Oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? How many people are in this caravan besides us? About a hundred or so. And we're kind of like on night watch, sort of. Yeah, you guys are kind of yeah. on night watch right now. You guys know that you've been helping out around here, keeping up everything and being kind of like bodyguards even, being some of the strongest people on the caravan. Alvia will say, Well, may I request your guys' assistance with something? 
Certainly. We'd be more than happy to help out in any way we can. Oh, oh of course. Something depends. new. It depends. I'm listening. All right. Well, in a few days, we'll be meeting with Clan Ironweaver, and I would like, just in case, there to be some people that know how to converse and talk and maybe some bodyguards as well. Would you all be willing to take up that job? I don't think anything is going to happen. I think Clan Ironweaver is very easy to talk to, but the Knolls have kind of always been reluctant of us Easterners. A few of us are not great people, especially considering I'm a dwarf and the other clans are not as nice. But I'd certainly be willing to talk on behalf of the group here. I'm not much of a bodyguard, as you can see. But you are much of a talker. I am an incredible talker. That sounds easy enough. I wouldn't be able to provide you all much for it, but I would really appreciate it. Oh, don't worry about that. We see the state that y'all are in. I don't know much about the gnolls, but if you greet people with a smile and just be calm and courteous, everybody will be willing to listen. And every experience here has just been great. I mean, like, things are weird here in the material plane. I I like, uh, well, there's just so many sounds and places. And, I mean, this ironwood forest is going to be, I guess we're going up to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so knolls, those are like bumpy hills, right? Knolls. No, the knolls are... Do you know what a hyena is? A hyena. Um, I don't even know what a lowena is, no. Well, look at Jaska a little bit. They're, they're completely different. However, they're, they kind of have canine-like features. They're quite big from what I've heard. Yeah, they're... Much, oh. much taller than me. And I'll she'll say, oh. raise her hand up to kind of gesture to uh, like, like, as tall as you heard the feet, Like seven feet? Yeah, something like that. Wow. Yeah, that could stand pretty tall. It's pretty intimidating as well. They are fierce warriors. Well, so what, uh, we're supposed to meet them in a couple of days. Yes, whenever we arrive, and then they will show us where we plan on establishing. Hopefully, assuming everything goes well, I really don't want to make my way back to Venturis, considering we've made our way all the way here. But it may also allow you all to enter the Ironwoods. I hear they are quite fond of keeping people out. Oh, well then, we should certainly talk to Clan Ironweaver so that we can make our way into finding our way through the Ironwood. It might be a good partnership. And if they say no, Blackjack and I are great about helping people say yes. We are. Well, sometimes, I mean, we just go even if they said no, because what they really meant was yes. They always do. They did mean yes. They always do. And I I think that's the, once we get through with what we were going to do, then usually it's all right. Yeah, except for the... Never mind, okay. Yeah, don't, don't talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. How tall are, is Zianzi? Zianzi's about four foot seven. Yeah, this whole time, Twitch has been on the flank, getting closer and closer, and just super close, listening, hanging on every word. Especially at the end with the whole, we can get him to say yes, or we can just ignore the fact that they don't say yes. How I tall like you. <laughs> How tall is, is uh, Twitch? Four-ish. Four feet? Sure. Oh, okay. Go four. Well, it's not too bad. Jessica, she's about... She's about 6'2". Okay. Uh, Gideon size. She's pretty tall. Well, then, I say uh, for the rest of the night we rest up and get back on the road tomorrow I, morning. I agree. We need to wake up early so we can get there on time. I don't want to leave Clan Ironweaver waiting. They are sending representatives to us, so hopefully we will not be late, or else they might, well, reasonably be a bit upset about that. We're trying to please them as much as we can here, and I do believe that we can make a great partnership. As the night wears on, I pull Zianci over to talk privately. Zianci, I'm a little worried about some of our group here. That uh, Twitch fella seems uh, rather suspicious. Does he seem that way to you? Yeah, and he tastes like vinegar. It's very weird. I don't like it. Yes. Jaska, she seems fairly kind. Oh, yeah, Jaska does seem kind. I haven't had a chance to, um, she's a very light sleeper. So you haven't had a chance to taste her yet? No, not yet. Okay, we need to be worried about that. But as long as we keep a second eye on this Twitch fella, because I I don't trust him at all. He, um, is obviously a spellcaster, a warlock maybe? Wizard? It's something weird. Don't think he's a warlock. Okay. That's more like what I can do. Oh, that's what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've seen him with a spell book, so I think maybe... He's some kind of bookish type of magic oh, user. Oh, like the weave. That makes sense. Right. Got it. And those I've never trusted wizards, so... Hmm. Alvia will say, I will see you in the morning. Be up early and ready to go. 
And he and heads off to bed. We'll be here for whatever it is you need. Just let us know. And he nods his head. Anyone else do anything before you head off to sleep? I am staring at the ground, but slowly it's moving into the pattern of Zionsi's eyes. Just circle, 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 and then disappears. And I snuggle in for the night. You think, Jessica, are you just settling down? Jessica kind of corrals her tumbleweeds, getting them into a more contained position. They all link twigs with each other so they don't drift off in the night, and uh, she uh, will bed down. Do they sleep, like, beside her, or they yeah. go off somewhere? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, they'll sleep cool. with her. So, so you all snuggle in together? Yeah, that's probably why Zianci can't taste me yet. You <laughs> <laughs> <That's my laughs> can't get past the tumbleweeds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As the night quiets down, the campfire is put out, and you all head back to your tents and begin falling asleep. Elsewhere, a young knoll has set off on her journey along with her best friend, a small possum. As Sintra, would you please describe yourself? Walking along, you see a pretty massive, seven foot two, tightly muscled, well-dressed knoll warrior. Occasionally she'll just kind of reach up to the larger than average pauldron where she's carrying her best friend, the possum. She'll reach up occasionally and give you a little scratch behind the ears. Billy has his pink noodle of a tail looped around a little loop that is on Sintra's pauldron, like a little seat belt. But he is just a possum. So gray fur, his back is kind of darker gray, his face is a lighter gray, and his tummy is more of a white he has little, a little pink nose and whiskers. He has little pink hands that look like human hands. And his feet also kind of look like human hands. They're also little pinks. And then he has little pink ears. But he's also wearing teeny tiny armor. A little chest plate with the red ma insignia. Just so tiny on his chest plate there. And he has a sword on his side and a crossbow on his back. And he's ready for action. From time to time, he will affectionately nip at Sintra's ear. Billy, stop. You're pulling on my earrings. But they make the click-clack sound. I know, but it hurts. But you should watch out for those those trees, the danger in the trees. <laughs> it's fine. There could be danger in the trees. There's danger everywhere. You must be careful. Yes, Billy. Together, these two have been journeying for a few days to meet up with a clan known as Clan Ironweaver. They have arrived to meet the clan, and greeting them at the encampment is pretty tall, but meets the eyes of Sintra. Uh, she says, my name is uh, Sirena of Clan Ironweaver. I assume you are Sintra of Clan Redma? Yes. Is this the matron of the clan? Is she just a, just a representative? A representative. Okay. I will pull my shoulders up a little bit, trying to size her up. Like, how important is she in the hierarchy? Pretty important. On your shoulder, Billy also stands up to his full height of 18 inches and puffs out his tiny chest. And you've brought a grooming possum with you. No, no, no. Bodyguard. Bodyguard. All right. I like your curiosity. He puts his hand on his sword. He obviously doesn't take it out or anything, but he makes sure that it's visible. Well, I'm glad your mother has sent you here. Well, at least one of us is. I'm excited of the opportunities we can make with these Easterners. They could make great work harvesting the ironwood trees as long as we teach them how to correctly. Well, of course. I mean, what, last time we had some of those short, flat-footed, fluffy ones, they started trying to clear things off wholesale. Yes, and, uh... The representative that was sent to our clan ahead of time seemed pretty nice and not like the other dwarves of Venturus. So hopefully this will change, but be alert of their schemes. They have no respect for the land, squints his tiny beady eyes. I'm going to send three guards with you. However, I want you to take the lead. That is what your mother specifically requested. 
was that you must take the lead on the diplomacy. Fine. However, if they start acting up or attack you, my three guards will help you out. They are some of the most skilled I know. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, we will be the judge of that. I will warn you. A few weeks ago, we heard a what sounded like a loud booming coming from the Ironwoods. It was sudden and then stopped. A booming? Like an explosion. We sent a few dozen warriors to investigate as well as two bounty hunters. They have not returned and we worry for their presence. And this was what, several days ago? About a week ago. Something weird is going on, so be wary. We would send more, but unfortunately we are having our own issues with a few uh, rebels. Young Yagu. bloods? A few young bloods, yes. <laughs> well, my services as a paladin of the Bone Mother are open to you. Yes. So do not feel pressured to figure out what is going on, but be wary of anything that might be in the Iron Woods. As you wish. So, your uh, goals here. Obviously, you want me to negotiate, but what am I negotiating for exactly? The dwarf that had come had said that they only wish to live a different life from the corporations of Venturis and Ratoya. We want them to harvest the trees, and once we get our problems settled out, we will teach them how to do that. But you are just going to go check and make sure that that is to their liking. If not, send them back. So they must agree to the harvesting of iron bark in the Knoll tradition and agree to be doing this work for you. Yes, and they must also not move further into the Iron Woods more than they need to. I doubt they will anyways, because it is quite dangerous. Well, if they thought they couldn't survive in that fantastical, cushy land of Venturus I keep hearing about, well, <laughs> we'll see if the Iron Woods is truly the place that will welcome them. We will see. They have to prove themselves truly to the forces of nature. As we all know, the Ironwoods keeps her own. Yes, and I'm sure if they were to even encroach, it would push them back. That it would. That it would. Well, I find myself dusty and thirsty from the road. Let's say we have plenty of drink and food, so feel free to get some for yourself. Excellent. There's a tug. Yes, Billy. I want berries. All right. So you all head over and start <coughs> feasting, and eventually you all rest for the night. Billy wants to eat a bunch of red berries, and then he wants to look at Sindra and be like, Hurr! with my red stained mouth fur. Oh, look at you, you fearsome thing. A mighty warrior of Clan Red Maw, if I ever saw one. As I'm like, cracking open the femur of, you know, some sheep or something, digging out the marrow, offering you a little bit. Here, marrow is what makes Null Warrior strong. Of course. Gobbles it up, but also, hee <laughs> hee, in his tiny little sharp teeth. <laughs> and he laughs at his own joke. Sintra, the words of your mother sort of echo through your mind as you bed down later that night, and you just think about all she said about... You have to become a leader. You have to learn to deal with others, even if you may not like them. <sighs> this caravan puts too much egg in my belly. I think we have some herbs you can eat. Is there a healer? No, no, no. It's, it's not that kind of egg. I mean, I can try to massage it. No, no. It's, it's, it's fine, Billy. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, you mean in your, in your feelings? Yes, Billy. I can no massage feelings. No, they're a little more difficult to deal with. Wait, look at this! And he jumps up and he does a little dance to try to hear, <laughs> cheer you up. Maybe a performance check and uh, maybe a um, insight check. Which one do you want? No, you you make the oh, performance, performance check. Oh, performance. And then and then Sintra makes. Okay, so I Sintra. rolled a three I'm... with a negative one, so I have a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I was about to say Sintra is very amused because I got a uh, five, but... Uh, Definitely doesn't make you feel better, but you do see a tiny possum dancing. <laughs> so you see, the, you see the tiny possum dancing, and you're a little amused, but you're still it's still in the back of your head, the thoughts 
of your mother and ex accepting that responsibility. Thanks, Billy. Yeah, I, I feel so much better. I'm glad I help. I sleep with one eye open. He will take out his sword and sleep with his sword, Tron, and hopefully not cut himself. It's fine. <laughs> he protect. You all drift off into sleep. The next morning, Sirana wakes you all up and says, good morning, you all. Um, <sighs> hope the Bone Mother provided you with good and sufficient sleep. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Today should not be too hard. I doubt the caravan would resist you too much, but today is the day that you need to go meet with them, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you feel about it. And you see that three warriors are lined up behind her, and she says, these three will accompany you. And they all sh nod their heads towards you. Billy will hop down from the shoulder and he will inspect the soldiers. And so he goes to each one and he kind of gives them a poke in the shins because that's what he can reach and tries to size them up to see how good soldiers they are. Are you a strength check? Hey, I am very strong, but I roll bad. Five. The first two you poke at, they're perfectly fine. Perfect stature. The other one appears to not be perfectly balanced on their knee and stumbles back a little bit, but then stands straight up. I step back so I can look her in the eyes and then I point two fingers at my eyes and then I point two fingers at her eyes. I watch weakest link. And then I scurry back up to Cinter's shoulder. And you see like the face of the of the knoll just looks a little worried <laughs> as just seeing this little possum <laughs> sizing her up and it's just very interesting to see a possum that bold. And I will just reach up and give Billy a little scritch behind the ears. Excellent work. We watch week one. Point me towards that caravan. Just head that direction. So, Blackjack, Twitch, Ziantzi, and Jaska. You see what appears to be four, no, five, one of them smaller on the other's shoulder heading towards you. Alvia will say, well, it looks like that's them. I got to um, freshen up a little bit. Uh, you all can handle that for now, right? Oh, we've got it taken care of. We'll certainly talk to them. I'll be out in just a second. And I walk over and meet you halfway, and I say, well, Matt, I am Blackjack, and our friends, uh, we've got Twitch and Jaska, and uh, my best friend, Zianzi. We greet you out here in the Cowban, and you are... Terrifying. Whoa, you, you <laughs> talk? Um, I, I was not expecting um, I? the furry thing to speak. Well, don't be rude now. Underestimating me will be the last thing you do. I lean over to Zianzi and I say, My snacks don't let her talk. Why would they let it talk? You might get attached to it and then when you need to, you know, consume nutrients. I, know. I don't understand. Are you the person that's in charge of this group? No. Oh. That would be me. Ah. Uh, and you are? Sintra of Clan Redmaw. First daughter. Terrifying warrior. Sindra, we were supposed to meet Clan Ironweaver. Yes, I speak for Ironweaver. Good. Well, I'm speaking for the dwarves and the caravan that are coming to settle, not in the Ironwoods, but just on the outside of the Ironwoods, and we're looking for your approval for us to settle there, if that would be all right with you. And they gave a jackrabbit the authority to treat with me. Well, this show, they can't even talk for themselves. Well, Alvia wanted to be presentable for you, so he sent us on ahead as his messengers, just to let you know that he'll be a few minutes. Right, Alvia Selvestone will be out in just a moment, but we thought we would meet you first, just on a kindly, friendly basis, to let you know that we're not going to bring any danger to the Ironwoods. We're not about... Are you, though? I have no intention of it. This huge, again, seven foot knoll <laughs> is looming over you. And you and see his ears kind of fall back in fear. You know, we're not here to cause any trouble. We're just looking for a place to settle because we need a new home because we don't like all the things that are going on in Venturus and you're a very frightening uh, creature and... Uh, Zianzi leans over to Jaska on the other side of him and says, is, is that the violence? Is that what we're looking for now? Do we have him now? 
No. No, uh, that's not okay. Uh, it seems no, very no, intimidating. No need for violence, Yancy. Okay. Uh, it's very intimidating. And Jaska will kind of not step in between Blackjack and Sintra, but kind of step beside Blackjack. Your name's Sintra, right? Yes. It's very nice to meet you. Who's your friend? She looks over at Billy. Your worst nightmare. Oh, I've had quite a few nightmares. Ah, you're just too adorable to be one of those. I am not adorable! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I am fearsome! I can tell. But you may call me Billy for now. It's nice to meet you, Billy. It's nice to meet you, Sintra. Yeah, we're just kind of killing time until Alvia gets over here. And Billy kind of leans into Sintra's ears. Soft dwarf. Soft. As you say that, stepping out of his tent is Alvia, and he looks very, very different. And you see... Still has the long brown hair, but the traditional dwarven beard is gone as he steps forward and you see this strange figure without the beard and you all know he just had it just a moment ago and has just shaved it off. Alvia, let me introduce you to Sintra uh, of Clan Redmaw and Sintra's bodyguard, Billy the Possum. Billy nods in approval of this title. <laughs> he looks at Sintra and says, Well met. What are your uh, terms for us staying here? I cannot go back to Venturis now because of my beard being gone. I'm here or I'm not. I hope you can respect that. Strange negotiation tactic, but... <sighs> I do not wish to harm your trees or harm the clan. All I ask is that my people live here. I know it will be difficult, and probably more difficult to Venturis, but it's better than living in those harsh conditions in the cities. Iron Weaver is setting forth the following terms. Your group's residency here is contingent upon your willingness to work for the clan. They are seeking individuals who would be willing to assist in the harvesting of iron bark in the traditional null ways. I understand that in years previous, our people have tried to take the trees from you. Yes. And I believe that the clan is right in this way, and they have the right to do that. And we, as a clan, would like to do that for them and make up for our ancestors' wrongdoings. Very well. The second term of your residency here is also contingent upon the fact that you do not attempt to press farther into the Ironwoods. We uh, had not planned on it. Good. Uh, we believe that it is probably more dangerous in the woods than on the outskirts of it. A truer statement than you could ever know, dwarf. When you say pressing farther into the Ironwoods, you're talking about the settlement itself, right? Do you plan on going into the Ironwoods? Yes, I had actually planned with my friends the uh, to journey in there. We're not going to settle in there. We are looking for a certain thing there. Yeah, I'm going in there. They're going with me. Uh, I also need to travel further, but if we could speak to the Iron Weaver clan, I'm sure we could come to an agreement for us for pushing further. Or maybe, if I might make a suggestion, I was thinking that maybe Sintra could join us, make sure that we don't do anything untoward toward the Ironwoods, because we have no ill intent for the Ironwoods. We are simply exploring. Oh, that's a lovely idea. I quite like that. Sintra and Miss Billy seem like good characters. I like Billy. I don't know why. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Billy. From where you are from, are there many speaking possums? Is that a common thing amongst the Norklands? There are many possums. Uh, no, I understand that. I've seen possums before, but I've never seen one that talks before. Is that common amongst the Norls? I am best possum, I talk. Jack, maybe try saying it a little slower. Ah, of course. I have never met a talking possum. Well, maybe Billy doesn't know quite why they talk. I, I don't think they need to uh, be explained a little slower. That's probably true. Oh! You're able to speak 
I'm Best Possum. You want to know why Best Possum? Yes, of course. Okay. I fall from my mother's back at baby. I cry out. I said, Mommy, help me. Mommy, no help. Mommy, no come. They leave me. It is cold. I am frightened. Then, no save me. Not Sintra. Different Noel. This Noel know many things. The Bone Mother blessed me with speech and intelligence. This Noel, they take me home. They will train me to be their apprentice. They are shaman. But Billy is colorblind. I cannot see what color the herbs are. People die. So the shaman abandoned me in the streets. Are the possums find me? They attack me. I'm about to die. All hope is lost. Then Sintra come down the, the alley and Sintra says, hey, are you gonna let them talk to you like that? Fight back, little one. So I fight back and they die. And Sintra and I best friends. Oh, you poor dear. I'm so sorry that that happened to you, but I'm glad you found Sintra. I don't know you needed to kill those other possums. They were not honorable possums. They had it coming. I'll respect that. So, would you be willing to be our guide, Sintra, you and Billy, into the Ironwoods? We could certainly use one. You seem pretty good in a fight. I pull onto Sintra's shoulder, like the little loop that my tail is on. We are not guide, we are diplomat. But I go where you go. You see her kind of thoughtfully, she's got this large cudgel just at her side. She's resting her hand on the head. I mean, a short trip couldn't hurt. We are keeping forest safe for Bone Mother. We must protect the forest Ex- from these shifty, shady characters. Exactly what I'm thinking. I don't like the one with too many eyes. I don't know which one to, which eyes do I look at? Do I look at the middle ones? Do I look at the side ones? Which eyes are the eyes? I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. I will poke two of them, and the ones I don't poke, those are the ones I look at. Good idea. As you are outsiders to the Iron Wood, naturally the woods would be nearly impossible for you to navigate. So, being the first daughter of Clan Redmaw and being so generous. Very generous. I will act as your guide. We will protect the forest from you. Alvia says, well, that's great. Um, Before you all head off into the forest, I think we should get situated into our new area because you are not currently at the area. We will lead you to the area that has been set aside for your encampment. All right. Well, lead the way. As you lead the way and everyone follows. Billy will turn around on Sintra's shoulder and watch them from behind. He is the eyes in the back of her head. And as we're walking, Zionsi says to Blackjack, so the little one is not a snack for later. I try not to eat anything that talks back. Right, yeah. I, I never let them talk first, because then you might get attached. That's right. That's why we try to avoid things that talk. I think we can trust them. They know a little bit more about this area. Maybe they know more about this portal we're trying to find. And the dwarf with like the loss of hair, like is it, it fix, it's fixing the molt? No, I actually remember when we were working for those dwarven clans that one time, and right. we were talking about how if you shave off your beard, you're never allowed to come back. Oh, that, yeah, like that's something about the nakedness of the face or something. As you all venture to their reservation, you see an interesting sight. A camp already there. Red Dirt D&D, Tales from the Ironwoods, is Aiden Cross as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Ziancy, Johnny Payne as Twitch, Carrie Hester as Billy, Connor Chenold as Jaska, Ash King as Sintra, and I'm Michael Cross as Blackjack. Special thanks to our Silver Star Paladin patron, Shenanigans Unplugged. Our theme music was created by the Cinemagician PJ Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. Our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of TabletopAudio.com, Sirenscape, and Monument Studios. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. If you enjoy the new campaign of Red Dirt D&D, make sure to subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd at whatever giving level 
works best for you. Join us next time as we travel farther into the Ironwoods. I uh, just left my pack recently, and I'm trying to find a mentor of sorts. I met him when I was younger, but the only thing that I know of is he continued on west, so Ironwood seems like the best place to find him before I start making my own pack. Of Jessica, give me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> you good, Kiri? <laughs> this is the sound of my heart breaking. Yep. <laughs> that was what I was like. Oh. She'll come over and pet its twigs. (laughs) 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 Stroke stroke some... (laughs) As she tries to calm him down. Um, I think the lesson here is never touch another man's tumbleweeds. I'm I'm a a lady. Thank you. (laughs) Never touch another girl's tumbleweeds. (laughs) Never touch a girl's tumbleweeds. Just when I thought it couldn't sound worse. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Not without permission. I'm going to go to point out that mistletoe is a parasite. No, the gnolls are... Do you know what a hyena is? A hyena. Um, I don't even know what a loena is. No. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's just an ena? I don't... Are they high or low? <laughs> it's the middle enas you've got to work about. They <laughs> can't choose left or right. They're very... Anyway. They are fierce warriors. Wow. What do they smell like? Wet dog. Oh. <laughs> Wet dog. Oh, yeah. Okay, Venturis. Yeah, I remember. Yes. <laughs> this whole city of Venturis just smells like wet dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's canon now. That's canon. There are parts of the French Quarter that uh, I guess it smells like bad wet hamburgers and other things you don't want to know about. I imagine it's the same thing. <laughs> but he is just a possum. Like, if you Google a picture of a possum, he's just a North American possum. Just head that direction. (laughs) (laughs) Bring me that horizon. (laughs) Um, Orders, Captain? That away. (laughs) Second star of the Second star of the road? From a distance, I imagine Cintra just kind of looks deformed, like (laughs) a hunchback situation. (laughs) Until you get close enough to realize, no, that's just a possum on her shoulder. You seem pretty good in a fight. Please hold. I...